Okay. Okay, welcome back to Syncretic Qigong and Reiki podcast part two. This is Matt here with Dave Makel for uh, more discussion on uh, Kung Fu psychiatric or psychedelic recovery of, of uh, traumatic brain injury and other things like art and software development. Um, so one of the things I, I wanted to talk to you about was your artwork. I really enjoyed looking at some of the tiles that you've painted through the years. Um, the heart series that you did recently, my fiance really liked. Those aren't mine. That's oh, my no? cousin. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, my cousin actually managed uh, glennmeekle.com. There's a plug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are all his. He lives in China and that's that's his his whole thing. Oh, okay. I, I mistook who that was. Yeah. I thought that was you. Okay. <laughs> um, but those are great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually they are. They really, they're really cool. Okay, so you're doing uh, the the web design and, and software development is your primary. Uh... Yeah, um, so I, I don't really call it web design. Like what I do is all back end server side coding. Okay. Right? So if you have like a phone and your phone needs to communicate to a, a, a server somewhere to store information, retrieve right. information, I write the back that side of things, not the phone, but what it's talking to, what any device is talking to through a network all of that security right. database. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do some particularly nerdy things for AT&T U-verse doing, you know, fiber optic provisioning on the back end. And they're like, oh, so you work for at and It's like that phone. No, it's, it's fiber optic uh, yeah. system stuff. It's not interesting. You know, when I push this button on my phone, what's wrong? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the guy, the guy is hooking the fiber up to the box. He's calling me like that's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I actually had a heart attack and a stroke working. Um, actually the stroke was, was after AT&T, but the heart attack was, was during, uh, my, my stroke was, uh, due to, uh, TBIs actually as a kid, my stepfather oh, was wow. particularly abusive. So I have a, a scar um, in my skull going from here down to here, basically. Um, and I was also in a number of car accidents, uh, mm -hmm. from like, you know, five to 19. I think I was in about eight car accidents. So. Wow. You know, yeah. uh, one thing that I learned going through what I went through is your first concussion, you're a 15, approximately 15% chance increase of having like dementia when you get older compared to what your, your normal range would have been. And then it increases exponentially with each concurrent concussion. Mm. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I fully believe is if you're microdosing for recovery, that you are actually bypassing that those chances because you're, you're, you're building it back up again so that you're not going to suffer that, or you reduce that chance of that certainty right. uh, of having dementia when you get older. And I also know that there are a lot of articles out there that they're microdosing people with dementia and having the, the article says very positive results. And as a guy that used that for part of my modality of recovery, I'm like, yeah, positive as in this, this, this shit works. <laughs> so it's like, uh, what was it? The Robin Williams movie where uh, he was bringing people back from. Yeah. I know the one you're talking about. I don't know the name, but oh, gosh, they, they had, they all had some condition and they yeah. were like, yeah. Yeah. This shut into their own mind and then they were yeah. awakening. I think De Niro yeah. was in that. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I tell you, the, the way I was, it was like spending, it was like being underwater and you had no idea what was going on above the, on, above the water. That's what my life was like. And um, uh, oh, just horrible. And when, you, when, you, when you're that injured, people look at you, you got a cast on, like, oh, hey, sit down here. Let me get you a cup of, cup of tea. You know, you have a brain injury. Everyone's like, oh, harden the fuck up. Oh, it's all in your head. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> Stop saying you're brain injured. Because every time you say that, that's what my cousin said to me. Every time you say you're brain injured, you're reinforcing it. And I go, hey, man. So if I have a broken leg and I stop saying, oh, I got to be careful I have a broken leg. Guess what? It's still fucking broken. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's get a cast, you know, like I still have to be careful. Uh, yeah. 
I, I, so like, I, I don't it, like I don't yeah. normally like to swear, but I, I watched one of your podcasts where you said it's okay. So I'm using it for emphasis. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I put on all of my things. You know, it's not made for kids. You know, and and that's also yeah. so that you know if you want, you can add it to a playlist. You know, so that's that's the yeah. other thing is the the videos on YouTube. If they're meant for kids, you can't add them to a playlist and that sort of thing. So I see. Um, you know, just trying to make things a little easier for everybody. Yeah. Also. Um, you know, with the stroke thing, I, I sometimes just, it comes out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, with my own psychedelic recovery, I, I started with nutmeg initially. And yeah, yeah. Um, that was kind of a mistake because I went through uh, antidepressant induced mania for a few months. That was fun. <laughs> does it have like a natural mao inhibitor to it or something yeah that's that's okay. exactly it. it's, it's yeah. a maob inhibitor if i recall correctly and then i had paired that with like you know uh cannabis oil and a number of other things like cacao and and so forth and yeah uh just drank down this uh brew and uh trip balls for about three days <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh I, I did regain some uh some function of like emotional processing particularly with not make I can I can say that like um, my compassion really opened up quite a bit I was able to see that you know it's not quite the nicest person <laughs> you know and sometimes it takes a psychedelic of some kind to to have that give you that perspective you go oh my god I'm an asshole right right I'm a huge gaping goats uh, asshole yeah that's me right here <laughs> yeah, yeah I had a night like that in the medicine yeah. <laughs> it's, it's definitely one of those things um, that you go through in this sort of recovery process. Um, yep. As as I got older, I, I started experimenting with uh, mushrooms and uh, 2CI, and uh, eventually I got to, to liquid LSD. And um, I found with psychedelic mushrooms with my uh, autoimmune issues that I have a lot of digestive troubles. So okay. LSD is a lot kinder on my body overall than, mm -hmm. um, you know, psychedelic mushrooms are, but it's, it's a lot gentler process um, with the mushrooms. Whereas with LSD, it's like, you're just a raw scab completely uncovered and <laughs> welcome to life right <laughs> yeah well one thing i noticed when i when i started using the mushroom instead it's got it's got spirit that oh, yeah. lsd didn't have and it was nurt like this, this presence was very nurturing and it's just like oh finally there's somebody there for me ah oh. and I, yeah it was like like you know the, the, like i said that that spirit plant medicine conference um yeah they're they're not wrong you my know. Mayan teacher um, was a tobacco shaman, and he was able to do things with cigar tobacco I've never seen anybody else able to do. Um, you know, he could basically roll one up for you right there. It's like, oh, this guy needs to sit on his ass for about two hours. So here you go. <laughs> you <know? Yeah. laughs> and uh, it, it was really interesting, too, because he was a, a trickster. He had... Um, stolen somebody's identity to get into the United States and uh, posed as a, a Cuban guy for two decades. And uh, he was actually Yucatan Mayan. And uh, oh. yeah, he uh, eventually got found out and they deported him and he's no longer allowed back in the US. But, uh, you know, he, he did kind of uh, guide me on my way to where I am now because we I started off with him doing um, Chen Tai Chi and uh, Wing Chun when I got really yep. sick. He was a friend of mine for about, you know, five years at that point. It's just like, dude, I got something that will probably help you. So yeah. let's, let's do this. No, and I, the, the funny thing is I could talk about plant medicines like for the rest of this podcast. I, I know you, you want to switch topics, but I'll just say this. I, I work with to, uh, tobacco. In, in, in the jungle tobacco is called Mapacho. You don't smoke mm. it too strong. But I dieted Mapacho and, and it was just like, any of the fuzziness I didn't realize I still carried from the brain injury just went Zhoop! and you're absolutely grounded and centered and focused. And you're like, okay, that's, that's what Bopacho can do, huh? And it yeah. was, wow. I have a ton of respect for people that do healing with tobacco and Mopacho. It's, it's, it's powerful spirit. Absolutely. He would, he would use that pretty regularly when we would train. Um, 
you know, we would sit yep. down in his cigar shop and, and smoke a cigar and then get up and, you know, do form and push hands and, you know, sit down again and watch a, a novella and then, uh, you know, we'd get up and drink a little bit of rum and maybe go to the strip club, just, just have fun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we would uh, smoke cigars and just enjoy life. And one of the things that, that I found really interesting was that his family had a lot of longevity. He, his grandfather lived to be 107. His great grandfather was 111. Mm. His father was in his 80s and still had black hair. And the, the gentleman that I was learning these things from was in his 50s and looked like he was, well, the age I am now, <laughs> 37. You know, he's looked like about the age I am. Yeah. It's like, oh, wow, that's, uh, you know, pretty good longevity if everybody's going 100 plus there. Yeah. So, you know, tobacco can't be that bad, right? If you do it right. <laughs> properly. Right? Yeah. So, you know, it was, it was one of the things that I, I found interesting that there's this tie in a lot of times with, um, you know, like alternative medicine and these, these martial arts. So as I started training more, I eventually got into like massage therapy and, 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 you know, preparing like, uh, like Dita Chow and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, you've, you've traveled pretty extensively for your training. It sounds like you go to Peru pretty regularly now. Is that correct? Yeah, I spend a couple of months a year there. Um, like I said, dieting plants and receive. You, you got to work with the plants. You, you have to diet them. So you receive healing from them and, and uh, cleansing, like limpia, it's called limpieza, mm -hmm. cleansing, healing. And this the more you diet it, when you sing to somebody, you have a stronger connection with that plant. So if I sing to that plant, that the more I have dieted, the stronger my influence on your energy. Because like I said, the curandero, curandero, my Spanish, um, the, we, we drink the medicine, not the patient. And, and But in extreme cases, the patient. So when we go there as students and apprentices, um, like I'm, I'm now one, one of his, many of his senior apprentices. So we all diet, we drink the medicine together to ceremony. And uh, yeah, so the more the more connection you have with that by doing long diet, uh, you have a stronger influence when you sing to that person. Uh, and it's it's you know it's there's I, I adulterate it with words trying to explain just how amazing it is. And at, at some point, when you when you have strong enough connection with that that that, that spirit, it gets you out of the way, and mm -hmm. then it's singing through you at a, at at the high level. So. And That's it's very much like we do with Reiki um, or, or Leiki, actually, the R is not what it's yeah. supposed to be said with. Um, but the analogy that I hear often is that you're supposed to be hollow, like the flute doesn't make a note with anything obstructing the hole, right? Right, right. So and, that and, is and, yeah. Yeah, a, so, a parallel, right? <laughs> no, and, and then we, you know, we throw it at, even at meditation. It's the same thing. Well, what is it you, we, we come, a lot of times we come into meditation with Kung Fu, like, I want power. And you sit there, like, I'm going to meditate like my, my Shufu tells me. Err. But really, if you can unblock your energy, then things come online. And so it's not about, it's about, you know, we, 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 we uh, initially we, we try to uh, come into Qigong, whether it's hard Qigong, soft Qigong, whatever. I want to gain something. And it's like, no, no, no. First, you have to lose it. You got to, you got to do the work. And do the, you know, like, like an example would be like one time this wrist started like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, hey, hey, what's going on? He's like, oh, you before uh, maybe break? I go, yeah, I, bro I broke my wrist as a kid. He goes, oh, yeah, now it's starting to clear. I was like, oh, I thought I had something cool going on. But, <laughs> I have unlocked so, a special power. <laughs> so in in my 20s, when I was training under Yang Shifu, he's like, He's like, stop, because I've, I've come to class like boom, 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 like banging my body against trees and doing all this hard qigong stuff for Bagua. And he's like, you know, you really want to understand this? You got to sit down and meditate. And, and it's like, ah, whatever, old man, you know. Yeah, yeah. And when I was brain injured, the only thing, and, and bodily injured from the car crashes, the only thing I could do was sit down and meditate, even though for a while there i had like two seconds like like nah, nah, what, what was i doing nah, nah, what, what was i doing it was like that bad at some point but all i could do for like a number of years was meditate and i just went boom 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 and it's like oh my god i finally get a lot of what my teacher talked about and and suddenly 
you don't block something in like it's layman's terms, something got unblocked. You had an experience in the, in the energy and, and visions and whatever you want to call it. Mm. You come out and you articulate differently. Like something happened. And now I have a connection to my body. I've never experienced before. Now my ribs have all this wiggliness to them that I didn't have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can do this. Energetic tassels. <laughs> <laughs> when I dream, I can fly. <laughs> yeah. So what am I, you know, like, I, you know, at some point I was meditating an hour or three times a day and just going like, boom, like, oh, and I should have, I should have done this in my twenties. So, cause in my twenties, I was busy doing, you know, all that testosterone has got to get out somehow. Right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's, it's a nice tie in the way that they can all, it's, it's all about hollowing out that flute I'm, I'm plugging that flute just like what you said you know i'm gonna use that i like that <laughs> like that's that's exactly it yeah the hollow bone of healing is a book that i i got when i started doing my reiki master work and um that's written by a, a lady named phoenix rising star she's uh you know got some angel meditations that sort of thing on youtube and she talks about just stepping into a state of pure love and getting yourself out of the way for that love to throw, flow through and, and working from this state of love, um, even in Kung Fu is, is pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, you know, like when I'm like, just trying not to hurt somebody, but you know, like, Hey, here's how you show this. And then they go flying. So, like, Oh, okay. Well that worked. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm starting to manifest some of these things. You know, I've been training, uh, Hing Yi and Bagua since 2014 and, uh, you know, working with some of the seniors in our lineage, you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, I can now get that capture, and and it feels like I've just taken their whole body. Okay, cool, I did it, you know, and 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 these things they come from that awareness. It's not, um, you know, physical skill. It has more to do with the the meditative side of it. I, I feel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's. Um, you know, anybody who's out there training Kung Fu, sit down and meditate. Come on, guys, find find something that calls to you, whether it's Buddhist or Taoist or, you know, even uh, Wiccan. I don't care what tradition it is that you're working with. It's 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 one of those things you got to do something with your spirit. You know, guys. it's interesting. I had a night of meditating where I swear to God, something came in and just like it was like if, if, if silence was a living entity and it probably is. It was that came in and it's like tonight we learn about silence and i sat there silently and it's like you'd hear the clock the, the, the clock like tick tock every second and it's like now let's focus in between that so in between the tick and the talk was just that oof. and there was so much information to be downloaded in that silence and i swear the way this thing would communicate because it someone was happening for me as i was meditating it was like if you took a page of, of like a black paper and you erased all the stuff around and just left the notes there instead of drawing notes on a white page that the way this presence communicated was was like let me erase stuff because i'm silence so i'll make the silence and leave the sound and that's how and, and it was just like the way i described it's like a symphony of silence and there's just and i found this an incredible peace from that and ever since then if i were to wake up at like three o'clock in the morning it used to be like Oh God, I can't sleep. I got to be up at 5 a.m. for work or 6 a.m. for work. I wake up at 3 o'clock now. I go, hmm, it's peaceful. And it was a real shift for me uh, with that silence. So meditate, find that silence. You know, people, we talk about, oh, I got to find peace. I got to find, find peace in my life, but I got all this stuff going on. It's like, well, let go of that stuff. Let go of that stuff. You dogpiled it. Uh, you know, you don't find peace, you reveal it by let do your meditation, let go of yourself, cry it all out, laugh it all out through your, whatever comes up, however you, it wants to purge itself energetically through your meditation. Whether I used to, when I was doing Tai Chi like three hours a day, I'd be bawling my eyes out. I don't know why. I'm like, oh, <laughs> stuff's coming out. And you, you afterwards, like, God, I feel great. Um, so, however, we purge it out, however, it needs to come out of your, of your system. Um, you're going to find peace because you you've like it's just you get rid of all stuff that's covering it up peace is just I, there uh what is it um the roomy quote 
uh, if you were irritated by every rub, how will you ever be polished? Right. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. You know, it's 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 interesting how these things, you know, you let them go, just set them down, right? Yeah. Um, I, I really value the the Vajrasattva practice for that, um, from Vajrayana Buddhism. I've learned that from um a couple of of lines now. And um, you know, Vajrasattva is like the garbage man. <laughs> you just put it all out there and yeah. you know chant the mantras and he'll take it all away <laughs> and and then touch you on that if you're you know being rubbed the wrong way by things what medicine work has taught me which really ties into like where i was at like at the precipice of with the meditation at the time is <clears throat> if if you're doing something that that pushes me to the ex, to the limits of my comfort zone i shouldn't say to you can you please stop doing that it's not about getting you to change for me. It's about me going, what is it about that that makes me uncomfortable? And then learning to deal with that and shine a light on that. And I need to let go of something that bothers me. And so it's about me learning how to navigate other people rather than having an expectation of like, you need to stop doing that because that bothers me. What? Stop being yourself? Let them be who they are. It just is what it is. And then just learn to navigate that. That is a very big lesson, right? Like not not every uh, not everybody is even trying for that. <laughs> <laughs> but then you, you look at the, the phrase like "all my relations." You know, one way of looking at it is how do I relate to others? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, hey, right. Deep thoughts. <laughs> That's what we're here for. At least Jack Handy's not around. You know, we got some good ones. <laughs> good enough and smart enough <laughs> right um so along with the uh Icaro, the the peruvian uh medicine uh work that you're doing now is there anything that are you teaching classes for bagua or anything like that currently i i had to stop after my second crash i, I was far too injured physically as and then the brain injury came in and I actually, I thought I'd never do martial arts. It was like a career ender for me. And uh, a couple of years later, I started kind of like coming out of the, de the depression of like, it's not sadness. It's not, a, it's not your uh, emotional state. It's your system is depressed. So everything is shut down. So I finally started feeling like, I, like, I feel like training again. So now I'm actually at the point where I'm reaching out to some of my old students and I'm like, hey, let's get the band back together. And right. outside going, yeah, it's kind of rainy today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a mission from God. And they're like, ah, I don't know about all that. <laughs> but, you know, so for me, it's been the inertia of sitting on the on the couch for the last couple of years of just getting. But it's like, I'm ready. So like yesterday, last night, I was outside circle walking. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it. I, I just got to get, get the guys in. But then. And, you know, I, the disappointment is the commitment, you know, like with my teachers that I had in the 90s, you know, I, like uh, Dr. Yuan with the Tai Chi, I was three hours every day, nonstop. Uh, Yang Shifu would be like uh, 12, 16 hours, whatever. And when I didn't see them, I was still training. And there was a, there was a time that Yang Shifu and I had a, a, a separation of ways for about, I don't know, like two years. And all I did was teach and train everything he taught me every, every day I was holding classes and then went back to him two years later. And, you know, he's just like, Ooh, because it's like, like, and I used to say this, I'm like, don't, don't show me anything else. I want, let me, let me get this first. So give me two years to really put it all together. So the, I have this huge disappointment and I've let some of my guys know, like, so what have you been doing the last couple of years? Oh, that guy went and did Aikido. That guy went and did half keto. And that's fine. But like, and they're like, hey, whenever you want to start, we, we want to do what you did. Why have you not just been doing that the last couple of years? You think you needed someone to teach you something new? Practice what I gave you. So I'm like, right. oh, ugh. commitment needs to be there. So right. uh, it, so it's, it's, I got to admit, uh, it's kind of heartbreaking, really. Uh, that after this many years that I only have one student that, that's like, sure for why, you know, I get it. And they're like, I've been learning other things waiting for you. And, and I look back on when, like when I met Yango Tai, the reason why he took me so serious 
is because I was so impressed by that guy. I dropped everything, like I said, and I'm like, I got to do this. So, you know, if someone could roast me and go, baby, you just didn't impress them. And it's like, all right, well, that's on me then. But I don't know. But finding someone that has that commitment, that's like, I want to get what Dave Meekle's got. If you're out there, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm working on my own lineage over here. I, I, I'm pretty committed to the Zhang Jiaodong side of things. Um, I, I started off doing Chen Tai Chi. And then after my teacher got deported, I uh, got into the Kenny Gong school and my Sifu just passed away. So I've been uh, working on the, the Alex Cosma uh, Chinese internal fighting arts classes that he's been publishing on video and uh, just kind of looking at another side of the Zhang Jiaodong school, uh, Wang Chujin instead of Zhang Rong Chao. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm still basically in the same family, <laughs> but. Oh, and that's, that's it. Like if, if you really want to um, honor your teacher, take, take what he shows you serious and that's it. Like yeah. uh, the best way to honor any teacher and this is my, you know, I do the same thing. I only do Bagua. That's it. And you know, and it looks, it sounds like you're doing the same thing. You think like, honor your teachers. Like if I have a guy that comes in and, I, and with me for like a year, I'm like, so what do you, what, how much do you practice each day? Well, I spend an hour on what you do. And I do spend an hour on what that guy taught me five years ago. So I want to honor him. You want to honor him and go back there, take him seriously and just do that. Right. Yeah. And, and that is one of the things that, you know, the reason I, I went to this other school is because it's kind of like deepening the research in the school I already have, you know, like yeah. these were brothers under the same master, but they had yep. different friends and so forth. And so, you know, that that's kind of why I'm doing what I'm doing, because, you know, locally, when, when I go and meet up with some of these guys, they're in the same lineage, none of them want to practice any of the fighting applications or the Gong that we're supposed to be doing. They didn't even get it, but they got a teaching certificate. You know, like it, it, it hurts me. I'm like, I don't got a piece of paper, but man, you don't, you don't know the, the basic five Gong we got. Like, you know, like, come on, what's going on here? You know, so, so that's, that's one of the things that, that I've seen in, in my own career. You know, my teacher, when he started off telling me about the school, he's like, you know, I'm pretty sad about what's going on with the other teachers in our line. And, and I'm going to show you what I think is important. And I, I sadly was, you know, kind of uh, going through some mental illness issues on my own part. And, and we yeah. didn't, you know, uh, stay connected through the years, but I really value the, the stuff that I got from him. And it, it gave me a foundation to build on. That's terrific. Yeah. So RIP Lloyd Day, um, I just went to his uh, funeral uh, a little while ago last month, and that was pretty sad, you know, I hadn't talked to one of my Gung Fu brothers in a couple of years with the whole pandemic craziness, just, you know, fell away, and I got a call one day, and I was like, oh, this is, oh, yeah, well, you know, Lloyd passed away, oh, man, this is terrible. Yeah. My condolences, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, thankfully there's, there's other good stuff out there. So, you mm -hmm. know, there's, there's tons of good teachers and, and um, it's just one of those things, you know, life happens. Yeah. You know, and, you know, even just the idea, like say Yang Shifu died uh, 2011, 2012. And it's like, how can I honor him? And I just work, work what he gave me as it was a piece of gold and you know, so he can look back from the spirit realm kind of thing and go, you're making me proud, you know, just right. Keep, just keep training, you know. Is, is that something that you've um, experienced is, uh, you know, connection with some of these uh, masters, kind of like the force ghosts from Star Wars sort of thing, or, or are you still? Um... <laughs> <laughs> well like, like i said before we started talking on camera i was like how deep down the rabbit hole do you want me to go because you know like so my wife and i are divorced and i want dating on her i started talking about this kind of stuff i don't give me second dates <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like so earlier i kind of alluded to some really groundbreaking work through meditation where you know, they talk about meditation can, can, you know, create, you know, they, uh, cause you, you naturally have like DMT in your brain, right. which, uh, you know, which, which is what like say ayahuasca, uh, is a DMT medicine. 
And I've had meditative experiences uh, where I swear to God, Yang Shifu was sitting on the edge of my bed and his teacher and then his teacher and then his teacher. And it's just, and you're just downloading. And, it, you know, I've had experiences in the medicine as well because it lifts the veil between you and spirit realm. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, I've gone, you know, the thing is, it, it's, it's very it's very important that i say this part it doesn't matter what i experienced it doesn't matter what i saw what's important is that i grow from it mm -hmm. no matter if 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 lord shiva needs to come in and ha ah, and i saw lord shiva needed all this stuff great but you're still the same that's so it doesn't at that point you're just tripping balls because you had some you know great meditation you need to be moving forward and advancing based on what your visions show what what the the universe decided to show me or reveal to me to help me move forward is for me and yeah I'll, I'll share my experiences but it doesn't matter what matters is i'm i'm growing from my experience mm -hmm. so but yes i have had experiences where i've had like you know from yang shu food like the four guys up to young uh to uh, dong hai chuan and i've i've had this like everything has spirit right and that's something that medicine even before i started doing medicine work i learned this kind of stuff from yang shifu and the bagua is a spirit like if you go to aikido club they have the what's it called the yamaka i forgot uh the 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 thing on the wall yeah it, it's got the the altar and, yeah and I, I go what's in there and they say the spirit of aikido what the hell does that mean you know when i was a teenager yeah. but i get it and i've had experiences where you're training and suddenly it's just like, whoa, and something's taking over and coming through you. And then at some point, um, you know, I talked about how in, in medicine work, when you start to sing, at some point you get out of the way and then that that ikro has a spirit and that mm. is singing and not you, or that plant is singing and not you. Kung Fu is the same way. You start doing a high level, high level. At some point, it's like you get possessed by, like, I'll just say this flat out, you get possessed by a master that comes in and does it. Just like, you know, use the force, Luke, here, let me take over. And you get out of the way and something else is doing it. And you're like over here going, holy shit. Yeah. You know, when my uncle passed away at the end of 2019, I had received the energetic lineage transmission from um, my senior gong fu uncle, Tom Morsi. And, you know, he took us through the Neigong and, and you know, some Xingyi and then we did Bagua. And then I saw this like flaming golden pyramid in the middle. And, you know, we we're all going Sansai into the center of the circle and it like connects into my palm. And I feel like this helix connect into me and then like shoots out into the world. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm supposed to spread this stuff. <laughs> you know, and uh, about a year later when my uncle passed, um, he passed away and then he was a ghost like I could feel his presence around my family when I came in for yeah. his his funeral and you know I was like okay well you know I'm I apparently am the only one that knows that you're Buddhist so I had to do a uh, like a funeral ceremony for him so I did like a hundred syllable mantra purification and um you know I felt the presence of these spirits come and I hear, heard his voice say what the shit nephew and you know the the, the wind blew all the balloons away because it was yeah. perfectly still and then the wind just took him and um you know that experience with his spirit I guess you know as payment the lineage decided I was going to get taught the rest of the three palms that it hadn't been taught in person so I was at my sister's house uh, after the funeral and you know I'd only been taught you know up to the fifth palm of the Zhang Rong child eight palms at that point in person and you know next thing you know I'm just doing it all I'm like mm, like a marionette and she's like what's going on like, I don't know <laughs> that's awesome yeah it was it was really cool um you know like i'd seen tons of videos sure but i'd never been shown the other palms and so you know that that experience was was kind of like a confirmation that some of these things that you know people like kamar francis have talked about through the years like you can have these non-corporeal teaching experiences where somebody doesn't put hands on you but you're being thrown around the room yeah, like, yeah. you know yeah I remember in the 90s, um, one time I was trading at Yang Shifu. So we, we went down the street to the park and he said, okay, practice uh, Shuan Huang Zhang, like the twin palm change. Go practice that. Okay. 
I'm just practicing, practicing. Like an hour goes by, and all of a sudden, his wife came down the park. She's like, because he did uh, twain uh, massage on people. She's like, hey, you've got a you got a client. He's like, oh, well, me forget. He's like, no, stop. And he and he left. Okay. An hour went by. Two hours went by. I'm like drenched in sweat. But at some point, it's like you start having these, you know, uh, amazing experiences, and it's like you feel like the air moving with you, or you you feel like you're you're like sandpaper and like the, as you move, you're, you're gripping the air and then suddenly the air is moving you. And at some point, again, this entity came in and that puppeteer thing. And then I, I did it for like four hours, just you know, drenched in sweat, but just like, oh my God, why would I ever stop? You know, cause you're just so, ah. And at some point I'm like, okay, you know, it's like 11 o'clock at night. So I went back up the alley and as I get halfway up to his, his house, he's coming down the alley like late at night. He's like, oh, sorry, we forget you. And I'm like, that, that was the best training ever. So we, we went inside. And he's like, really, what's going on? And I tried to explain it to him. And he drew this entity. He's like, like he drew me and he drew this thing. And I'm like, that's the thing. He's like, oh, this one. Yeah, no forget. I'm like, what is that? He goes, deep, but no forget. And yeah, that whole, you know, like whether it's the spirit of Bagua, you know, uh, it's at some point you have to accept that if everything has a spirit and the more you, you, you train, you're reaching out and you're like with plant medicines, we say you create a relationship. The more you diet the plant, the more you consume that plant, you create a relationship with it. Even with like uh, tobacco, you practice Bagua or Kung Fu, you're creating a relationship with that spirit and you, you're reaching out, you're reaching out and eventually you create that connection. And then, then boom, one day that energy comes through you. And I remember talking to Dr. Yuan, like my other prior Kung Fu teacher, and he's like, oh, that guy's a master of this. That guy's a master of that. And I'm finally went, what makes somebody a master? And he was like, they're chi. And I'm like, oh, come on, old man. Like, let's say you know, whatever. Let's, you know, but it's, I get it. I, I, in the right context, I totally understand what he means now. Because at some point, that energy of that system radiates out of you. And like a beacon. And it's like, oh, that, in fact, <clears throat> I went and saw Dr. Yuan. I was living in China in like 2002 through 2005. And I went and saw him and he, we're talking. He goes, when did you start doing Bagua? He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, your, your energy. It's like, that's cool. That guy was dialed in. I mean, he was, yeah, that's the guy that, doink, you know. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I had, uh, I have a teacher like that. We're actually going to restart class here soon, according to the most recent messages I got. So I'm super excited. Yeah. Um, and, and one of his teachers um, came to teach a seminar locally a few years back. And, you know, the, I didn't go to the seminar. I was studying with my other teacher that day. And, um, you know, my Kung Fu brothers at a restaurant later in the day. And I'm like, hey, man, what's up? How was the thing with Max? Like, oh, it was amazing. And, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, Max Christensen. Yeah, he's well, he's right here in the restaurant. They're like, no, he's not. I'm like, he's right here. I'm looking at yeah. him. You know, <laughs> like, it's, it's a bald guy. He's tall, right? Like, they're like, no, he's not here. He didn't come with us. He's, he's doing this. I'm, like, I'm looking right at him. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that reminds me. Like, you look at, um, say, Bagua, you know, it originally, like, if you follow, like, the stories of where it came from, it's like Taoist magic. And so even the act, the, the act of circle walking, you know, as a moving meditation is, is there's a lot more going on that most people will never comprehend or will never be told by their teacher. Well, we're, we're just uh, embodying the, the gold dragon, right? Like the yellow right. dragon. Yeah. But, <laughs> but as you're circle walking, you know, like, because there's things like you're, you're uh, listening behind you, uh, looking forward, but you, and you're lifting, like in, in here, you lift your ears, which kind of like, like, a, like think of a double room going, mm -hmm. Right. As you're circle walking and you you do that, it activates the occipital triangle. And it's the occipital lobe that they talk about is one of the ways of reaching between the like listening between the worlds. And the more you circle walk, it develops that psychic ability of being able to sense those energies. And one time. Oh. Hey, Dave, I hate to interrupt, but we're at the end of our time here. So okay. we're going to have to pick this up in another episode. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> thank you so much for yeah. everything that you've talked about today. This and is yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. This has been so much fun. Um, and yeah, definitely we'll have to do another episode of Talk Some More about the, uh, the, the real fun side of these arts, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's absolute joy being, uh, you know, having a chat with you, Matt. I really, this is, I 